Hi everyone. So it is Monday, October 5th today. It is exactly one week from the start of the gathering and I am having a little adventure, getting a little bit of wilderness time before I am completely plugged in to computers managing the gathering and spending time with you all. But happens that the area where I came to explore in the Eastern Sierra is the site of a amazing volcanic crater that happens to be full of obsidian. And as we've been talking about, humans are, are animals that at this point in our evolution really require tools to be very functional because we have these wussy fingernails and wussy teeth. So cutting edges are one of the primary human tools that make a big difference in our ability to do all of the things that we do to make ourselves more adaptable to different climates like hide tanning and food processing and so many different things. So obsidian, a source of flint nappable stone, is a hugely important resource. So this area here is Panam Crater and this is National Forest or National something or rather, probably a National Recreation Area. So you can't collect in this spot, but we're gonna go and check out obsidian in its natural habitat. So this is, according to the sign, I'm just learning this information, but it's a good example of a rhyolitic plug dome volcano. So what it means is that it was an extrusion of lava and the, the first part of that lava that came up got filled with little air bubbles because as that hot lava came up, it hit water in the environment and that created steam, which made all of these little bubbles. And then in the middle of that was this slower moving lava that cooled inside this matrix of the of the pumicey lightweight lava that's full of air. So super excited to check out both the pumice and the obsidian. And the fascinating thing is that those two things look really, really different, but they're chemically the exact same stone. Right? They're both mostly silica, mostly actually glass, and one full of air bubbles and one totally solid. So really awesome place to see all of those things and to see this very cool formation that you wouldn't be able to tell from here, right? Is this amazing volcanic obsidian deposit. Super cool. Let's go check it out. Here's another super cool example of rabbit brush where here it is mostly in the seed stage as opposed to flowering and you can really see that that classical aster look with the little dandelion plumes on the seeds, dandelion looking plumes, but that kind of feathery lightweight plume with the seed dangling below, super characteristic of the aster family. Let's see. So we're getting closer to the top of the crater and you can see the obsidian. Can you see that shiny black stuff up there in amongst these little spires? Super cool. So I can't wait to get up to the top and see it. And here is a little piece of pumice, super lightweight. They say some of the, some of the smaller, lighter pumices actually float on water, but it's stone, glass really, which is pretty awesome. So we're hiking right now through all of this pumice and getting close to the obsidian at the top. check out that it looks really similar with this piece you can kind of tell that it's the same material but with all of those little air bubbles where some of the pebbles they look so gray it doesn't look as much like the same material but crazy cool Look at this, he's incredibly strong. Ah! <laughs> Don't drop it and squish your head. An Iron Man workout for the day. That was a little heavier than I thought. Is it actually kind of heavy? Yeah. I thought it was gonna be like one of those foam blocks that look like it's a real rock. Right. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> So it is definitely a smoky one. 
and we aren't getting particularly lovely vistas, but this is so cool. Seeing these enormous obsidian extrusions and all of this crazy, blocky, wacky terrain is so awesome. Ah, what a fascinating landscape. So the trail is mostly pumice. So the very light, lightweight stone. It's crazy, it looks like stone and then you go to pick it up and it feels like a sponge because it's so full of air. It's much more air than is actual, actual material. It's very cool. Check it out. I am standing in front of the enormous tower of solid obsidian. This is so wild and it's totally different from the other area that I am familiar with gathering, well, not gathering today, just looking at it, but there's an area that I gather obsidian in Oregon called the Glass Buttes, which is mostly characterized by low hills with little veins and pits that one digs obsidian in. I have never seen solid towers up out of the ground of obsidian, so this is super, super cool and I'm excited to be able to share it with you guys. Look at how beautiful and shiny it is. It is so pretty. And check out the striations of red on the surface. So the red is from iron and then here obviously is when it's where it's been broken and just solid beautiful obsidian and then all of these fractures are the kinds of conchoidal fractures that we see with napping but these probably i would guess happened from other rocks falling unless people were illegally going after it with pry bars and such but here is a great example of that kind of conchoidal fracture in the Hertzian cone. So yeah, so cool.